I'm Tim Malloy with the Civic Association. It's Tuesday, June the 23rd. 100,000 coronavirus cases in Palm Beach County and counting. For a long time now, uh, Palm Beach has trailed behind Miami-Dade and Broward with the uh, mandate to wear masks. Well, that has now changed. You will be urged to do so. Will you be arrested or fined if you don't? Maybe not, probably not, but you certainly get a lot of dirty looks and it's hope this becomes a civic responsibility for all of us in Palm Beach, which has been pushing this from the very beginning. Wendy Rutledge talked to Mayor Gail Coniglio. Now that these masks are going to be required by the County of Palm Beach, that will directly apply also to the town of Palm Beach. So we caught up with Mayor Gail Coniglio to find out how this is gonna roll out. I think the important thing is that it, we now have a comprehensive effort. I have been firm about the fact that we need to partner with all of Palm Beach County and our part, city in West Palm Beach to have a cohesive effort. There is no point in the town creating those obstacles with a mask and potential confrontation unless we're all doing it and it is um, consistently enforced. I am encouraged by the county's move today. I have been assured that there are the votes for that and that it will be rolled out by their authority toward the end of this week. I am grateful for their leadership in this. I think in our haste and joy and relief to be outside again and certainly a little more lackadaisical on the mass, we've seen a tremendous surge in the number of cases. We need to get that back under control. That will be the driver of the termination of a mandatory mask. But I think it's important that we are all, again, taking responsibility for our own actions and putting on masks. As far as how it will be enforced, I think that the state is giving a little leeway. Of course, we do not want to tie up police resources for that one lone unmasked person. But I think that the restaurants, the retail, our small businesses will only thrive on remaining open. So it will be up to them to, again, request a guest or a purchaser to please mask. I'm hopeful that there will be an educational process here, not only in the town of Palm Beach, but across the county that, and again, we can politely, courteously, and with respect, ask someone to please get a mask. Some of the stores and restaurants may provide them. I know that the churches do. But again, it will only hopefully take one request for someone to carry it on them in their purse and for all of our friends and neighbors to help other people understand our policy. Isn't an infringement on my rights to not wear a mask? Well, you're welcome not to wear a mask, but please don't do it in my presence because my safety and health depend on your being responsible. So, friends and neighbors, pull them up. We're going back to the mask. People not wearing masks are the reason for the sharp incline. It's at least one of them. Councilwoman Maggie Zybin, a former nurse and head of the council now, says there are other reasons. Opening the county too soon, not social distancing, and there's more. We have seven sites now that are operating every day. And there are, if you count all the private sites, there are 62 in the county. So there's a lot more testing being done, which is fantastic. So you're gonna see more positive cases if you do more testing. It's just a statistical thing. So that's, that's number one. Number two, there is congregate uh, living transmission. So what does that mean? You have skilled nursing homes, you see it there, we all know that, we're used to that. Uh, but we also see it with people who are living in close quarters, um, you know, a lot of family members in a house. It was a rare event this weekend that looked for a while as though it could spell doom for a prized piece of property in town. A fire in town. Here's how we covered it. I'm Tim Malloy for the Civic Association. Chesterfield Hotel catches fire today, a very hot fire on a very hot day. He takes up to 100 degrees. There were occupants in the hotel. Quick response by Palm Beach uh, Fire Rescue as well as an assist from West Palm Beach Fire Rescue. Let's let Chief Donato pick up the story from there. And so they got a call here for the Chesterfield Hotel for uh, smoke down in the ground floor restaurant area. Uh, units got here and they found a lot of smoke in the lower lower level at the first floor, uh, but they couldn't find any cause, any heat, any fire. Uh, they began to open up some walls, found a lot of smoke on the walls, uh, traced that smoke back up, oh. and they found fire in the parapet wall on the roof itself. Oh. 
And so they've opened that up pretty good and they've got that fire out. And now our concern is we have to make sure the fire hasn't traveled anywhere else. Yeah. And you know, how did that smoke get down to the first floor? Did something drop down? And so they're just kind of opening up walls and ceiling spaces, looking to make sure that the fire didn't spread anywhere. But we believe it's contained at this time. Uh, but until we open everything up, we were, we're not going to know for sure. So what's the source? That's always the trouble with something like this. It takes a while. So they're investigating up in the rafters to try to figure out what happened here. No lightning as opposed to yesterday. Uh, you know, look, until we get in there, we don't yeah. know. Uh, you know, the most likely cause of most fires in void spaces is electrical. Yeah. But, you know, we'll have to investigate that once we get to that point. Is anybody living there now? Uh, so the Chesterfield does have guests yeah. in it. Uh, most of the guests, fortunately, are out. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. People are out enjoying the day, enjoying the island. Uh, so most of the guests are out. The other guests have been evacuated. They're back at the pool area, being yeah. taken care of with refreshments, and uh, and the management's tending to them back there. And you threw everybody you have at this probably. Yeah, yeah. All, our, all of our crews are here, plus we have West Palm here to help us. Okay. Right. No one hurt, thankfully. A lot of very hot firefighters trying to cool off after this on a very hot day. It's an old hotel, almost 100 years old. Would have been a terrible loss, but they made a good stop with a great assist from West Palm Beach Fire Rescue. So that's it from here. I'm Tim Malloy for the Civic Association on what became a busy Saturday. Safe to say we're all at this point pretty desperate to get outside, to get a distraction, to do something unique and new. Well, the Palm Beach Zoo has pretty much the answer for you on that one. Here's Wendy Rutledge with more. Tim, the Palm Beach Zoo has been reopened now for a couple of weeks and made all the important changes that are needed for people to feel safe during this COVID-19 era. But what's really fun and new about what's going on here at the Palm Beach Zoo is all about the three new baby tigers. Margo, what's new here? What have you done to make people feel safe? So we're so excited to be open. Um, it really starts even before you get here. We're really encouraging people to buy their ticket online. And if they do, all they have to do is it's touchless. You just bring your printed ticket and you scan it and you go in. So in we went past the pool safe and therefore virus safe fountains by the hand sanitizer dispensers, keeping a safe distance from the many other visitors while making a beeline for the tiger habitat. So we've got two beautiful tiger habitats. We want three and we want to connect them all with an overhead pathway. So one, the cat gets to explore and get up in the trees. Two, it's going to be fun to watch the cats go from one habitat to the other. And they'll have choice. They'll be able to go to whatever habitat they want based on where the other tigers are. So it's going to be exciting for the cats, way more physical adventure for them and lots of different viewing for the guests that come. Could we be standing here and looking up at a tiger crossing? Totally. So the crossing will come right here through the bamboo and into this area. <laughs> yes, the tiger habitats are beautiful with the dense fishtail palms and bamboos. But where are the babies? Well, if you look closely, you can see the tiger mom, Appy, and somewhere near her are the three perfect little cubs. But mom and babies are not yet ready for prime time. She's being an uber great mom, super protective. Definitely by September, we will have babies in here that the guests can enjoy. In the meantime, believe it or not, the crew at the zoo has some baby proofing to do. We're a little concerned. What if one gets in the water and can't swim yet because they're tiny, they're still young, and she doesn't rescue it? We can't go in there with her and these cubs. So one of the tiger proofing we have to do is fill the river with rocks. See all of the beautiful branches and trees. And if you're a smaller tiger, you might be able to climb up that. Yes. And we don't want that, but we don't want to lose this amazing tree. So we're actually going to take the netting and go all the way over the top of it. So look for Mama Tiger and her three babies to be in this beautiful habitat no later than early fall. Meantime, we were curious how the rest of the zoo animals reacted when those human animals were let back into the zoo. The group of animals that it was the most clear was the primates, which makes sense. So we're primates, right? So they were like, if you showed up on a day that we had been closed, they were like, what? Hi. <laughs> All part of the new normal. For the Palm Beach Civic Association, I'm Wendy Rutledge reporting. 
times are tough, it's amazing how we all probably rely on our pets a little more than we normally do. Maybe they rely on us a little more than they normally do. What's it like to live with a couple of dogs? I'm one of those people. Here's, here's how we're doing it. They are your best friends, and if you're fortunate, they are each other's best friends. Full disclosure here, these are my dogs, Rosie and Dooney. This is Rosie. This is Dooney. They're good dogs. But like most of us, three months into a lockdown, they go absolutely nuts once in a while. They used to do this after dinner. Now they do it all the time. But this is not surprising, says veterinarian Dr. Mary Ellen Scully. Do they know something's different? I think some dogs are happy that you're home all day. I think some dogs want you to go. My husband's home all day, and the, the dogs used to come to work with me because he went to work, and they could stay with him all day, and some days they're waiting at the door because they want to go to work. They want to get out of the house. I can't speak to cats or birds or gerbils and all the rest, but dogs are pack animals. They're familial, so there's a good chance they're glad we're around. Will they miss us when we go back to work? Some dogs will. Some dogs will be happy to get back to their necks. Do you think they really do get it to some degree that this is a different life? At the oh, moment? yeah. I think some dogs are happy. I think some dogs will have a hard transition when they have their people around all day and then they're left by yeah. themselves. And some dogs will just be happy to take their nap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when life gets back to normal, whenever that is? Will they miss us? Will they even notice we're not around as much? Personally, I'd like to think so. Pretty interesting satellite photo we have for you here from uh, the Weather Service. The Saharan dust cloud, 5,000 miles long, coming across the Atlantic and soon to dump particles on Florida and the Caribbean. Will it cause respiratory problems? Not likely, unless somebody is particularly sensitive. Will it provide amazing sunsets? Yes, it will. This is one of those phenomena. This year, a little bit more tense, intense than usual. And the good side of this, it holds down any tropical development. So very unlikely we'll have any hurricane or any kind of tropical development for a week or so at least. And we got our fingers crossed on that one. I'm Tim Malloy with the Civic Association, where membership matters. If you are a member, we'd like to have you join us again. If you're not a member, come on along. Have a great uh, week, and here's some beautiful ocean shots.